This is KGW News at Sunrise. Okay, the first wave of snow and ice hits the Portland metro area and the gorge. This is a live look at our crews in Portland and in Troutdale. We're keeping a very close eye on the roads this morning and we're seeing slick conditions. <laughs> It's nasty out here and uh, it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Oh yes, consider this the appetizer. The main course <laughs> is coming tonight. Mm, mm, mm. Now I want breakfast. Uh, <laughs> it is a Friday morning. Thanks for joining us here on Sunrise. So if you're waking up wondering how much snow did I get last night? We recommend you look outside for that question. Uh, for Rod Hill, we have what's to come. Rod, uh, what can we expect the well, rest of today into the weekend? Real quick, let me answer the first question. Uh, generally speaking, across the Portland metro area, Washington, Clackamas, Multnomah counties, up through southwest Washington, uh, Clark and Cowlitz counties, one to two inches seems to be very uniformly on the ground. And temperatures are, in fact, upper 20s to about 31 this morning. So it's icy everywhere with some snow on the ground. Less coverage when you get south of Wilsonville down towards Salem. So yes, the appetizer, we've had that. Here's the main course. This is that stronger front that will come in this evening and give us basically a solid eight hours of steady snow in Portland all the way to early tomorrow morning. I don't know how that would not dump eight inches of snow. That's what I expect. That's tonight into tomorrow morning. Now this morning, we're pretty quiet. Uh, we do have a mixture of some icy showers in the coast range down around McMinnville between Camby and Salem right now, but currently it's dry in Portland. I expect basically some morning flurries overall. We're at 29 degrees. Snow showers pick up this afternoon. Could be an inch or two during the daytime. Still freezing at 5 p.m. Then this evening is when the snow picks up. We get the main snowstorm, which could be a very serious ice storm for you folks in Salem. And we'll talk more about all of that coming up. Yeah, that would not be good. All right, Rod, let's get to some uh, closures and delays. We can't list them all here, but we do have a running list at KGW.com and on the bottom of your screen. So Portland Public Schools, they are online only today. The buildings are closed to in person. Westland, Wilsonville and Lake Oswego schools will be online only as well. In Clark County, Vancouver schools are completely closed. No online. But Evergreen students, you will do your work from home virtually. So those are just a few of the changes so far. Again, keep checking our list of closures and delays at KGW.com. If I-84 through the gorge gets too dangerous, ODOT typically closes it at the Troutdale exit. And that's exactly where we find KGW's Devin Haskins joining us live this morning. Uh, Devin, fill us in. How are things looking there? Uh, well, it's not snowing right now, or at least if it is, it's really, really small flurries. I can't uh, make it out with the, the, the lights. Anyways, the wind, as you know, when you're ever out here, if you've ever been out here to Troutdale, it's cold, and it is cold right now. Obviously, snow is on the ground. Freezing rain came through yesterday. You can see kind of evidence of that, you know, as the icicles hang on the, uh, the signs over here. But uh, on our way out here, we took this video of uh, I-84 at about 3.30 this morning near the uh, Gateway Park Rose area headed out to Troutdale. You can see the roads completely covered in snow. It's one of those drive slow and steady kind of drives that you have to, especially as you head out into the gorge. You know, we were out here yesterday afternoon. We went as far as Bridal Vale and the, the wind was just whipping around and practically knocked me off my feet. It was so bad as the storm came in, it was creating poor visibility. Last night, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office said on Twitter that they had responded to multiple crashes on 84 in the gorge because of that reason. The tweet said tow companies were giving them three hours ETAs. Now, while the snow can make driving tricky and sometimes dangerous, we talked with a truck driver that says it's not the snow that is the biggest issue for him to drive in. It's a freezing rain, the ice. That's, that's the worst stuff. The snow doesn't bother me too bad. It's the ice and the wind. That's what's real bad. The ice, they, especially since I grew up here, I know what the freezing rain does, and it's not pretty. <laughs> it may be pretty to look at, but yeah, definitely not fun to drive in. So when does ODOT close the gorge? I think that's always the biggest question. Well, they tell me that it's uh, the driving conditions, how drivers are handling it, and who they say or who they call their ODOT gorge, experienced ODOT gorge professionals that make the ultimate decision on when to shut it down. I'm not sure that's an exact title, <laughs> but hey. If you got that title, you, you, got, you hold some serious power. Yeah, looks good on a resume. <laughs> Thank you, Devin, reporting uh, on the east side yeah, of the Yeah, it does. It <laughs> we had a crew out there in that part of town last night, as a matter of fact, and they also saw quite a few slick spots. Peabot actually closed Northeast Halsey from 92nd to 100th Avenue, and that's where our crew ran into that guy right there. You saw him a moment ago. 
Paul Barton is his name. He was out there helping drivers navigate through that icy stretch along Northeast Halsey. People don't know how to drive on it and a lot of people were just going too fast and we did almost have one rear end collision here but he was able to get around the truck without hitting it. Paul Barton, not a bystander. He's in the game, my friends. Uh, the bridge that goes over, or I shouldn't call it really a bridge, it's more of a ramp that connects 84 and 205 there. We all know that spot close to town. Uh, it was really icy. Deputies also shut down Northeast 238th, south of I-84 for a bit last night because so many people on that spot were spinning out. All right, well, ODOT has been keeping a close eye on the roads with more than 200 maintenance workers on 12 hour shifts trying to keep those roads clear. There's a live look at Highway 26 right near the zoo. Cars moving slowly, but getting through just fine, at least right now. Let's get live to our reporter, Bryant Clerkley in Drive 8. You guys have been heading out and about with a check of the roads. Good morning, Bryant. Good morning, Nina, and we are on Interstate 5 headed north towards the Tigard area, and the roads are a little slushy. Let me show you guys sort of what we're looking at right now. So yes, the roads are a little slushy. You want to be really careful. In some areas, it can be very hard to see where the lanes are at, but crews have been doing a great job uh, keeping everything clear from what it looks like. People are going pretty slow. No one's driving uh, the regular speed limit, but it looks like people are being really safe. And just like those closures that Drew just mentioned, Halsey is also closed from Northeast 80th to 84th because of icy conditions. And Gilham is closed from East Burnside to Northeast David Street. And in Washington County, chains are required in these areas. 175th between Shoals Ferry and Rigert Roads, Barnes Road at 118th to the county line, and Cornell Road from Cedar Hill Boulevard to the county line. And we are still out here on I-5 North, so if you're coming out here, just drive slowly and be very careful. Uh, we saw a couple stalled uh, trucks and things like that. But most of the roadways seem clear. People seem to be taking it easy and we're gonna be updating everyone. We're gonna be driving around here so you can find updates on our website, kgw.com. You Back got you it. Guys. Yeah, keep those live pictures coming. Bryant, thank you. TriMet busy too, making sure that max trains are ready for the snow and ice. We are prepared to run trains overnight um, if needed, which will help keep the overhead wires clear of ice. Um, Max does very well in the snow. Ice, I think, as it does with all of us, uh, poses greater challenges. So many of the buses have drop down chains, super handy because drivers don't have to pull over, stop and put them on. Everything is automatic. If the snow really does start to pile up, TriMet says it'll put heavy duty chains on all of its buses. But remember, once those buses have the chains on, they are slow. They can't go more than 25 miles an hour. Yeah, plan ahead. Okay, this is my favorite part. We love getting a look at what you guys are seeing. And Ashley sent us this photo from the Bethany area where they got a little bit of snow on the roads last night. And Sean is showing us what it looked like yesterday near Division and 154th. So we want to see what it looks like in your neighborhood this morning. Text us those pics, 503 226-5088. Yeah, viewers can often uh, drive the snow coverage for us, so definitely send in those pictures. We also know weather will have an impact on the local COVID vaccine rollout today. Starting with the mass vaccination site at the Oregon Convention Center, it will be closed today. So if you had an appointment there, we're told you will be contacted so you can reschedule. Also, the drive through clinics at the Portland Airport, Hillsboro Stadium, and Multnomah Pavilion on the OHSU campus, they are all canceled for the entire weekend. A lot of people are now asking, what about all those doses that were set to be given out this weekend? Are they going to go to waste? Well, the answer is no. We asked that question and we found out that they have not been thawed yet. That is good news. Oh.